It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Deer Camp Coffee, Buck Bates, JPO Game Call, The Island Armory, Hacker Mac, Sunrise Archery, and C3 Better the Hunt Technology. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, episode 650, Dan. 650? 650. It's kind of a little milestone. <laughs> a little? <laughs> I'd say it's a big milestone there, bud. So, yeah. congratulations. So that puts you up to uh, about 400. That might be episode 400 for you. Is it? It might be. You started around 250. Is that what it was? I think so. Whoo, doggy. So Danny's Danny's a, a seasoned veteran also. Right? He might not be the pod father, but he might be the, the pod prince. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying here, so you better take over before I get myself in trouble. Okay. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> that yep. It yeah. had a banner on it that said test. Okay. So Yeah, we deleted that, so that's yeah, gone. We're good. <laughs> we are good now. I tell you what, it is Wednesday night here in Michigan, which hasn't been too bad this week compared to hot last week. Last week was hot. It's gonna be hot tomorrow though. It's gonna yeah, be ninety two. It's supposed to be uh it's hot and getting dry out there. Uh it is. It's it's uh, Tammy, no. I, I posted and shared that on my personal page. This is off the Up North Journal page. so Right. So, uh, yeah. So, tonight, episode 650, talking nothing other than archery. There you go. I love it. Yep. How about we talk about the people that help us? That Let's talk about good. them. I like it. All right. Starting out uh, with Buck Bates, folks. Uh, 20% off your order. You go over to buckbaits.com. Check out their ever-changing lineup and adding to it. They're adding fishing stuff. They're adding more hunting stuff. Uh, UNJ20 over at buckbaits.com. Started last week. That's right, folks. The easy cuts. You've seen how Mark demonstrated them for us, how easy they are. Mike used them here in his house. I use them up north. If you go over to my Facebook page, you can see exactly how I used them last week. Exactly. And if you use the promo code UNJ15 off, you get 15% off your order at easycutproducts.com. Don't forget to ask for a can of Slicket while you're there as well, a great lubricant that we're using here as well. There you go. And Packer Max, folks. Uh, gets $25 off your order if you use the promo code UNJ25 at packermax.com. And if you need help, Mark Coleman has a bike that he will come and pedal around your field for you for a nominal fee. I thought it was free of no charge. Oh, okay. You said free. Okay. Yeah, yeah he'll do it for free. I think so. Right? <laughs> uh, the Island Armory. I tell you what, folks. What great people. Hope, Jay, you're getting better. Um, He's a little sidelined right now. Uh, if you want 10% off your order, use the promo code UNJ10 uh, at theislandarmory.com. Go check out their front page. They have it in stock. If you don't see it, ask Natalie. She'll get it in a couple days. It'll there you be go. right there. Yep. They'll take care of you. Uh, JPO Game Calls. And I tell you what, it's getting to be we're July 4th, so people are going to start thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Hunting season is just a few months away. Uh, if you want 10% off your order, get over to jpogamecalls.com. Waterfall season is not that far off. Early goose season. That's September 1, right? That's right. And we would be amiss if we did not say, Deer Camp Coffee, uh, get your 10% code of UNJ10, 10% off your order over at Deer Camp Coffee. While you're there, get a bag of the UNJ brew itself. Uh, check it out. And for anybody here down in southeastern Michigan, uh, they are going to be at a lot of the farmer's markets uh, with Uncle Henry's. So if you're at a farmer's market, you see Uncle Henry's, or, or and you see that, you'll see Deer Camp with them as well. I tell you what, nothing other than going back up to the UP, up into Newberry, where it's a nice 66 degrees. Uh, a little cloudy, it looks like. No uh, snow on the ground. No snow yet. Not yet. And uh, I tell you what, go over to Cedars, get a pizza, get some UNJ coffee, and enjoy the UP up in Newberry, thanks to FM 123 FM up yeah. there. There you go. So how you been? I've been doing great. Good week? Definitely a good week. Um, I tell you, it's one of those things you just, you know, the weather comes and goes. I had a busy week of weddings. I had two weddings. 
I was busy all three days. Uh, two weddings, Friday, a wedding, Saturday, a wedding, Sunday, a family event, and then I had my traditional Father's Day putt-putt championship with the girls over at, uh, not Dairy Queen. Uncle Ray's. Uncle Ray's, thank you. Did they let you win again this year? No, Gabby kicked my butt. Okay, good. Good job, Gabby. Right? So Don't let him win anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to stroke his ego any. Nah. Put him in it place. was fun, and she did get the only hole in one, and it was on a hole that you got a prize, and she got a free game of golf. Hmm. Is she going to uh, try her uh, putting out on holy moly? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Mark Coleman is fixing the bike now. It's got two flat tires, a sheared off pin on the rear drive shaft. Give me a week, and there might be a video coming. Sincerely, Mav. Good. Uh, we'll, we'll, can't, wait. can't wait to see that. Right, for sure. I want to see that Pacamax being pulled behind that trike. Yes, we do. And his little legs just to pedal him. Right? I tell you what, it's going to be a good video. Uh, but uh, with this dry weather, I know a lot of people are going to be shooting for getting some July food plots in. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to need some rain up here. We do need some rain. I know, I know Lincoln. The rivers was, are down. Lincoln was, you were out on the on the bay. Saginaw, yeah. Uh, but I know Lincoln was talking about it, that he needs rain over there or else he ain't going to have a crop. Yeah, well, his. we've got a lot of burn bans here. I think the whole state of Michigan right now in the Lower Peninsula is under a burn ban. Uh, at, least we, a, at least an advisor, but I think a ban as well. And with going into the 4th of July weekend, you know how that works. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, the last two weeks, uh, Linden, or I'm sorry, Holly and yesterday Fenton was hit by fires in, in their downtowns respectively. Yeah. That the heat uh, kind of didn't help. No, not at all. You know, so, first responders are taking it. Uh, literally, they're getting hit hard with these fires, this kind of heat and stuff. So Absolutely. But you know what? A couple weeks ago, we were up at TAC. Uh -huh. uh, we were supposed to have a show to talk about it, but we had some technical difficulties here. Yeah, the air, air conditioning went out. Yeah, it was hot. <laughs> that was the week we were off. Right? So I tell you what, we went up to TAC. It was a great, um, it was a great... It was a great time. Yeah. And you know what? If you if you, if you you come to my, my computer here real quick, we got up there on Thursday. We got up there nice and early. I got to um, find your computer first. I know, right? right? Um you can see right there, the first place we walked by as we walked up to the hill was the practice hill, which they were still setting up because you don't see the flags or anything that we saw the next morning. And you can see that I was perfectly balancing that cone on my thumb. Yeah, you were. Yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, this is just the beginning of your adventure when you go to TAC, folks. Uh, the practice field is just a get a sense of, your, of maybe somewhat of your elevation. <clears throat> Not even close. But I do believe that furthest animal out was at 100. And, okay, so straight up from my finger uh, in the practice range was 110. The buffalo? Yeah. Typically at 100 was 110. Yeah. Oh, okay, wait. It was 100 because to the left of that is the caribou, which was they were shooting for the truck. 112? Yep, that was 112. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I tell you what, you're shooting at the 10 ring. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, Mark, Crystal Mountain. And I tell you what, it is a feat itself, just getting onto that practice range, getting it all set up. Great. I'm going to say the venue was great. It was awesome. You know, it, it's hard to compare Crystal Mountain to Boyne Mountain. Uh, from what we've heard, Boyne Mountain is on, undergoing a major renovation that's going to take two to three years. So TAC is going to be back at Crystal Mountain again next year, possibly a third year. Yep, exactly. So uh, we found out that, actually, we found out that time to a gentleman right there when we were kind of hanging around, just looking around and see what was going on. But I tell you what... Unfortunately, they had to cut all their courses short by five targets, so you went from 25 to 20. Mm -hmm. But the first thing they told you when you walked up was, hey, guys, you're only shooting 20, mm -hmm. so if you feel like you want to go up and shoot more come after, back one, after 1 o'clock, come back. We'll get you up there, and you guys can go shoot whatever you want. Yeah, actually, they wanted you there by 2.30, the latest? The, yeah, and 2.30 was the latest because uh, the one day, I think it was... There was uh, weddings up there. There was, there was actually a wedding up there and the cool thing about that was and this was not planned at all folks is that the people getting married were actually archers so they actually shot the course in the morning got married in the afternoon that's pretty cool i know right and they had that was totally unplanned because they because of the late change for Boyne to crystal mountain uh it worked out in their favor that they could really have a good weekend and they had a wedding up there the next day too yep exactly. actually i think they had more than one i think they had two or three up there. okay so. and uh i tell you what um getting up there the weather was was phenomenal. There was just no no 
if ands, buts about it. A little bit of rain, a little bit of um, coolness, but it was awesome. And I don't think we had, we had some rain, but it wasn't like that one year we kind of got soaked. No, no. I, we just had some sprinkles. It wasn't bad at all. The humidity wasn't bad. Uh, the walking wasn't bad. Well, <laughs> Yeah, it was. <laughs> well, we shot uh, we shot the knock on course first day, and when we got there, we shot the first four or five targets. They were all downhill. Retrieve your arrow, keep walking downhill. And I turned to Danny and I said, "You know, at some point, we're going to pay for this because I said it was it, starting it, off too easy. It was it was there were long, long, long shots shooting downhill, but it was a Dudley set this course up, and I said." We're going to pay for it. Yeah, because at one point, we were basically just bouncing back and forth. Yeah. But we were kind of gradually going up. And then we went up. Yeah, and then we went down. <laughs> and then up. Right? And then so, uh, so Tammy, my brother, currently is, I do believe, in San Diego right now. So yep. he's enjoying, he was enjoying the Padres game a couple nights ago. There Pretty you go. Cool. Yep. Uh, so, did we get any freebies or swag? I wouldn't say freebies because you get a T-shirt, which I'm wearing. Which is part of what you pay for. Which is part you pay for. So uh, And a sticker. <laughs> and a sticker. But uh, they really didn't have no freebies. Um, they had some trinkets or, or some stuff out there that some of the groups were probably giving away, but we didn't we didn't get any. Um, but you just, um, when you, you take it all in, like my brother had never been there. So we drove up with him and showed him the course and everything. And it, he was kind of like, you know, this is the practice course and... It was like, here we go, and so it was fun. We had a good time just getting him inaugurated into the tack. And getting him acclimated here. We're, that's what we're doing right here the first night. Exactly. So uh, we just, it was kind of, so, so Tammy, how many how many arrows did we lose? We'll talk about that later. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. It Just so you know, you go in knowing they're not all going to come back. That's right. Because it, we just know that how the course is set up and if Dudley's setting up a course or matter of fact any of the courses you're going to run into these type of shots uh, and we'll talk about what the hardest target was because we got pictures of that one. Oh yeah but there you go you see in pictures of us getting acclimated to the evening got you know got set in early the and worst part of the whole trip is that we stayed about a quarter mile away from the Iron Fish Distillery. That, that was horrible. And, and <laughs> to tell you the truth that was not planned whatsoever because yeah. It was awesome. Um, this we stayed in an Airbnb, and um, which was a quarter mile from the Iron Fish. We had to stop there. Had to. And uh, we literally just drove off the end of the road into the Airbnb. So that, those are pretty koozies, aren't they? You can't miss those things. Yeah. Um, so there we are, um, top we're, of the mountain. Top of the mountain. Very first day, day one. We're getting up there. It was beautiful. Uh, we had our knock time of about eleven o'clock, eleven thirty. Uh, we went up there. Took some photos, and you can see the the clear blue sky. It was starting to get warm. Um, and actually, we're standing right where the bride and groom got married. We're standing at the what was their altar right there? Yes, we were. <laughs> we had the gentleman up there say, "Hey, I'll take your picture." And yeah. he was uh, kind of directing people to go right or left. And the first, we like you said, the first day we did knock on. So when we, I mean, literally, the right over that edge right there is the knock on sign. And that literally was your first shot, and you started, and away you went. And, and literally, going past this red sign that you see on the screen, you're going downhill. So it's like, okay, here we go. Here we go. First up was a 60-yard shot at a bear. Yep, yep. So it was like, here we go. And away we went. And for, first picture we're going to show you here, I, I had a little issue with this. This uh, I don't, don't remember exactly where this was on the course, but I do remember I had I, I said some things I probably shouldn't so have at this point. We got to this one spot. Did you delete the video? Oh, no. That's never going to be deleted. I didn't think so. Um, and, and you could see it was a beautiful day, and it was kind of getting warm, but we were still kind of on the flat, shooting side to side of the hill. So it was like, okay... Which wasn't too bad, so elevation-wise to your target was minimal. And I think this one was, I don't remember, 50, 60, 50, yards. 60 yards. And, you know, my brother had never really, to tell you the truth, I sighted in my brother uh, Thursday morning before we went and picked up Mike. So we got his pin set, and we were off and running. So he had a five-pin sight, and he was shooting the 28, I do believe he's shooting. Uh, and so we got him shooting, and away we went. And I tell you what, we were shoot, we were flinging arrows left and right, and it was awesome. Uh, we weren't really busy, 
No. Uh, there wasn't nobody pushing us. There might have been some in front of us, but there was nobody really pushing us. We didn't get stacked up on any of the, the shots, which was nice. So it was it had a good feel, flow mm -hmm. to it. Yep. And um, yeah, this this particular target. Um, at some point in my draw cycle, as I'm drawing back, my thumb release caught. The only thing we can figure is caught my shirt on the way back and launched an arrow. Somewhere into those trees that you see there in the picture. <laughs> don't know what direction. Don't know. It was pretty straight. From looking at the yeah. video, it was pretty straight back. But, yeah, it was. We're not looking for it at that point. Yeah, it, so was, it was it was, it was a off and run shot. I had a couple choice words to say and then got another arrow and got, got with it. So And it was nice to get out the, the PSEs and stretch your legs in, 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 in preparation for hunting season or, coming up. Um, we just, you know, it was... Take our time, do some shooting, have some fun at mm -hmm. this. this. I mean, we we didn't even keep score, folks. We was just let them let aim, them let them rip, and, and see where they, they went. Break. And you know, if we didn't feel comfortable at one distance, or we moved up, uh, and or we we just had so much fun with my brother there and, and Mike and I, and we we were just out there just having a good time. And I think he uh, had too much good time, too too fun, uh, too much fun here on this one. This one, okay. So this one is is my biggest. Foam buck to date. Uh, I killed him at approximately 80 yards. What did he score? Uh, he scored a lot. <laughs> and um, literally, <laughs> it's funny because I'm holding the, the antlers, but the, the, the thing was we hit him and his antlers <laughs> fell off. So it was kind of funny. But this shot was about 80 yards, and literally you had to put it between two trees um, that were basically on each side of the vitals. And I think two out of three of us hit the target, and I think my brother was a little low. Uh, but it was it was just one of those. We were just having a good time, and my you know my brother's first time out there. He was having a blast. We were having a great time um, going at it with each other, and just kind of razzing and catching up to people or not catching up to people. And and then as we got further into the course, um, we noticed the elevation started to do some changing on us. We were on the back side of the hill now. And we were going to eventually come back to the other side, the front side. So we started to start shooting. And you notice here that we're starting to shoot at elevations up and down. So it was starting to get there because Mike even warned it. He called it. He <laughs> says, this is kind of easy. We're going to be paying for this eventually somewhere in here where we're going to be going up and down. And it's going to get worse. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's hold it right there. Uh, let's let's go to our first break. We'll come back and we'll wrap up day one. Because day one might take a little bit for you. So we're going to step outside, take our first break, and we'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So. What kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Second segment of the show. That's right, second segment of the show, and we are back. We're talking about our days up at TAC, and I tell you what, it was a fun time. We were on the knock-on course day one Friday, mid-afternoon, and we started to shoot... A lot of arrows got lost by other people. Yeah, it was. You, you always got to go into this knowing you're either going to lose something or you're going to. It, it's going to happen. You're going to break some arrows. You're it would uh, give them up to the trees. It was. <laughs> and if you see this shot here, this is literally one of the shots that you, you shoot through. And this is this is actually walking up to the target. But this is probably anywhere from 40 to 60 yard shot that you're you're shooting through these trees. And so either this tree is, is closer than you think or it's further than you think. Yeah. And as you can see that there's a lot of carnage in the trees um, that it happened. And as we were walking through, and, and the way they have the target set up is you can hear other people shooting. If you're quiet enough, like when you're when you're getting ready to shoot at a target, there's probably another target where you can hear other people cussing <laughs> or hearing the arrows hit the trees, <laughs> which I'll have that story here in a minute. Uh, but um, you know, so you go in knowing that, and and the um, what happened was Mark Coleman. We were using our PSE Hunter HDs, and we have them set up for our 
Is one, that is one, is, is the one of them mine? I think I think that is, is right it there. missing a knock? No, there's a knock on that one. Uh, I probably pulled the knock out. Or it's that one right there. If it doesn't have a knock in it, I pulled the knock. But anyways, uh, we are using our Hunter Hunter P uh, Hunter HDs from PSC, which we are set up for our hunting rigs. And these arrows are awesome. I'm not gonna lie, uh, we've shot other arrows. You know. L- l- Carbon arrows today are really good out there. So it's just the ones we, we shoot. And we're also, uh, Mike and I are both using Stan releases. Yep. Which, game changer for us when we were introduced to them. Actually told to use them, kind of, <laughs> by Dan. Um, he, you will buy these. <laughs> right? And Tammy. And it will make you a better shooter. It will. And Tammy. There were vendors there to purchase more arrows. And yes, there was people purchasing more arrows like you would not believe. Because, like, we talked to a couple of people. That's where literally their first stop. Yeah, we're going to go purchase another dozen of arrows. We're going to head up. And so... And give some more away. <laughs> right? Uh, so, like I said, we're back on the knock-on course. We're starting to shoot these elevation shots. We got to a point, it was like, all right, we need to take a break. It was getting hot. Um, Danny got tired. I got tired. We all got tired. And it was like... So we let a couple groups go through. And it was kind of fun. But... Um, the, the next group had six people in it and we're, and it was an uphill shot and the first guy shoots and smack. You can hear him just smashing the trees. Yep. Smashing. And they are arrows, Tammy. Arrows for bows, bolts for crossbows. There you go. And, uh, so out of this group of six, five hit trees and the one that made it and hit the foam skipped it off a tree. And that was that tight shot that Mike showed just an earlier. No, that's not. Oh, it. that's not it. Oh, no, it's coming up. It's okay. coming up. No, it's even tighter than that one. Exactly. So, so as we sit here and we we watch group after group after group go by, uh, right before we we got up, there was a group of five that went through, and there were young guys. Uh, four of them were shooting, and one of them uh, was just going along with them. And it, I didn't pay much attention to them, but the reason I bring it up is is we fall, fell in right behind them, and it's going to lead to the rest of the story for day one and two. Absolutely. So, uh, but yeah, we got up behind these guys. It was our turn to shoot, and Terry was up first. Yep, and it was uphill, and it was probably about 50 yards. Yeah, 50. I can't remember I exactly. can't remember either, but when you look at the, the picture that we were shooting through, you'll understand why we heard so much carnage hitting the trees. But after, uh, after him was Danny... So he took his crack at it, and what did you do? I, I didn't you both him you and him both hit the tree. Oh yeah, we hit a tree. Okay, yeah, it was. It was uh, and after my shot, I, I did push it through. I was like, I don't feel like climbing another hill, but so be it. We had to climb another hill. So and um, literally now the next set of targets we're going up this grade, and we're gonna come down this grade, up this grade, down this grade. So there's the there's the hole that we shot through. Right, and this is probably halfway up the course. I'm standing in front of the tree taking a photo of the arrows in the tree and you can see the gap it's a, a baboon that's up there on the hill i do believe that's my arrow on the right it the could bottom. be you can see my arrow it looks like it's right almost dead center yep in, in the baboon there the green one and you see the tree that's in front there covering up the back side of the baboon so you had to shoot that gap and uh let me see if i can and it's funny because when 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 you when you get onto this stuff it, it's like you get to a point where like okay Let's hope for foam. Yep. Because when you hear that thud of the foam, you're like, okay. Yep. And, and as you can see here, there was some carnage in the trees or skipping off the tree, as yep. you can see. That was the tree in the back. Yep. And so there was a pile of arrows laying at both of them. Right. Exactly. So it was just one of those things that we had a great time. And we went up and down these, and we it was just, it was getting hot. This is at an elk that was 73 yards. Something like that. Downhill, sitting in the pit. Down a steep, steep hill. That picture does not do it, that hill justice. No, not at all. It was a heck of an angle to go down, and uh, we just, it was it was amazing. But that's what you expect to tack. Things you wouldn't think about. Actually, this shot is an actual shot that you could probably pull off uh, if you're out hunting, because it's about 70 yards. He was laying down, and we just got ourselves ready. And then we had to go down the hill, which is always fun. And again... Uh, footwear is a must. It's key. It is key. You got to have boots, good boots, uh, hiking shoes of some sort, because there's a lot of sand. At least at this venue and at Boyne Mountain, both 
uh, as you're climbing, you've got to have good footing. Yeah, it's something that's easy on the feet. Absolutely. And you know, we just you know started shooting, and we got back more into the woods, going up and down. And these 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 shots alone are. are and of course, you know when when Dudley goes out to do this, he wants to make it fun and, and make you feel like you're out west or whatever you're doing, and not easy shots. Sure, you got out in the field shots, or but when you start adding these angles, or in this case, this picture, you're adding the tree. It, yeah, it, it becomes it becomes fun. Puts you out of your comfort zone. You know, it, it makes you take shots that you would never ever take out in the field, and 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 makes you, it, it, what it does basically is when you hit these things, it gives you confidence to make those chip shots so much more easy and it, and it also expands your effective range yes and and, and kudos to the, the total archery challenge for having different courses out there besides knock on there was prime there was sitka there was the leopold um there was one more i can't remember, I can't the remember them but each one like like the sitka course is always known to be lengthy long and flat and then obviously the other courses being up and down the hills each course offers something different as like in from day one knock on to day two prime was somewhat totally different because mm-hmm. you were actually going off the other side of the mountain uh, but we were trying to make it through and we pushed through and eventually we got out into the field and we were shooting at, at in a buck in an open field and it was windy and yep. it was just, it was one of those. I think it was 65 or 70 yards on this Yep. One. And would you normally take that? If you practice it, it'd be no problem at all. Your brother didn't shoot this one. He uh, he wanted to watch us shoot that one. And after that, here's his parting shot. He says, I've had enough. I'm out. Yep. He, he You know <laughs> he what? He took off. <laughs> he, he, headed down, he headed down to the end of the mountain, go rest and relax, which was fine. Because this was tough. This was, it was hot. It was humid. It was going up and down. Um. And it was his first one, so he went down, got some food. Uh, he waited for us at the bottom of the hill, and then uh, we finished out. And literally, on so there's 20, 20, 20 targets, targets, and target twenty. No, number nineteen. Let's oh, go back to nineteen. You don't have to talk about nineteen. I don't have a photo of that. No, you don't. But you got to understand, we're we're he- we're walking down the hill. We're looking. For number 19. There were green cones. They were numbered. So you knew if you found it, obviously. Standing at the cone. Yep, we're standing at the cone. We're looking to our right, looking to our left, and I can't see a target. Mike can't see a target, and he's looking and scanning. I and, saw the, the ribbon and, hanging. And, and then finally you, you picked up the ribbon, and then I'm like, what? And I saw about this much of an antler about, or, about or a horn sticking up as a African animal. Yep, it was about just a couple inches through the grass by the pink ribbon, and we're like, What? There's no way I could shoot and know what I'm shooting at. So literally, we kind of moved to further down the hill a little bit, and it was like it was an African animal at 35 yards, standing broadside. And the but hill and the grass was covering at the cone. Couldn't see it. You could not see the vitals. You couldn't see anything. And actually, it's kind of funny if you if you're in the totally Ar- total archery challenge group. That one was called out as a quote. Really, Dudley? I'm not six foot five. The guy's jumping up trying to see the target. Right. Yeah. And I totally get it. And it was like, all right, we're moving up a little bit. And sure enough, we uh, took care of that one. And, and then we were on to number 20. So let's go back to the story of where the guys passed us, the group that was ahead of us. Right. There's five guys there. The one guy wasn't shooting. He was just along with him. Didn't pay and, much attention to it. And he and he really he really wanted to shoot, but he ended up eventually he had some misfortunes where he actually broke broke both arms yep. within a couple weeks of each other. So he wasn't feeling confident to shoot, but he wanted to be there and enjoy yep. it. They are all basically local from the area, uh, so it was great to meet them. Kind of let them go by, laughed a little bit when they shot, and we followed them down, and we were on our way down the hill. And this is the knock-on course. And so far, at the end of the knock-on course, uh, you get to shoot with Mr. Dudley himself. He had a little area set up there, and you could he was going to shoot. You could go shoot with him. And he put up a Sasquatch that was 112 yards. 106. 106. 112 for the caribou. Uh, 106. You can see one of the guys in the group here ranging it. Right. Because that was the first question I asked. He said, we walk up, and there's this group of guys there, and Dudley points to the group ahead of us. He says, how many in your group? And he goes, we've got four shooters. And uh, then he looked at Danny and I, and he said, how many in your group? We said, two. 
And uh, the guys turned to us in the group and they said, we're not shooting against them guys. They're pro shooters because they got shooter shirts on. We're like, we're not pros. <laughs> we got shooter shirts on, but we're not pros, you know. And then Dudley says, well, you know what? You two, come over here with me. He says, it's us three old guys against the young bucks. And as we walk over, I said, I don't know if you remember or not, but I said, ATA, two years ago, he goes, yeah, you guys interviewed me. That's right. So he remembered us from, from the interview. And uh, so we, we t- chit-chatted a little bit. Yeah. And I tell you what, it was, it was totally it was totally laid back. It was total fun. It was it was awesome. And then we got to shoot against each other. And then it kind of started uh, a little little jaw jacking against each other. And and then uh, we got Dudley to shoot. And yeah, of course he's going to put it right on target. Well, he's got a spotting scope there, and he is he shoots and he gets down the spotting scope and he looks through it and he goes, yep. He goes from three inches low and about an inch and a half to the left. <laughs> See, that's pretty close, and we're all like, yeah, okay, show off. Right. You know, at 106 yards with the wind blowing. So uh, he takes his shot, and as we're sitting there, I, I told Danny, um, I said, I felt the wind die down at my back, and I looked up the hill, and I could see that the wind had died. Uh, up in the trees, I told Danny, I said, draw and shoot now. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, you know, I'm reaching back, getting my gear here, to getting ready to draw. Danny's getting ready to draw. And I don't remember if if you shot before me or not. I can't, well, in this picture, no, you still got an arrow in your, and you still got an arrow in your bow here. Yeah, you went first. So I was getting ready to shoot. I shot, I hit foam, and then Danny shot. And then I, I did something even better. I didn't hit foam. No. I, I, I literally bounced my arrow off my sight. Now, why did I do that? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Right. So, you know, Danny shoots, and then as Dudley, you can see he's got his binoculars up here. He gets on the spotting scope, and he says to me, he goes, dude, he says, y- y- you got it, you know. And before we start shooting, he, he said to us, he said, can everybody look up there? Can you see Sasquatch? And we're like, yeah, we can see Sasquatch. Of course, up there he looked like he was, you know, <laughs> about an inch tall. And he said, do you see the pink ribbon on him? And we're like, yeah. And the pink ribbon was like dead center of the chest. That's, he says, that's what we're aiming for. We're all aiming for that ribbon. So after we, we shot, he, uh, he turns to me and says, dude, you got it. I said, yeah, I know. I, I got foam. Well, then the other guy, or no, he says to me, no. He says, you got the ribbon. He says, not only did you get the ribbon, you put it in the hole that I pushed the ribbon in with. Exactly. And that was awesome. It was like, it was awesome to see Mike, you know, like, first of all, you got to understand Dudley's telling you this. And we're like, what? And then was like, I was just like, yeah. Then he I, got I his, uh, he took his phone to up to the spotting scope, blew it up, and you could see it. He goes, look. And, man, you, you nailed it. I mean, it was one of those shots. It was awesome. It's one then, in a million shot. Right? And so then, the kids the kids are going to shoot, you know. And the, the kid, the, the best of them, he turns and he's like, really? Yeah, no, no pro shooter, huh? <laughs> so they shoot, and the kid who's really good, he's the one that shot in between Dudley's arrow and my arrow. His is the one with the, the black fletchings and the green knock. And Dudley's is the one that with the that's down below. So, right, exactly. And it was it was great shooting. Laugh, laugh, and well, cut, cut up a little bit. And so they're going to send the guy that broke both his arms up. The yeah, hill. he was the arrow puller. And I'm like, nope, I'm going to get him. I'm going to pull arrows because I want pictures. So I took pictures while I was up there. But there you can see where I hit at. I mean, right at the end of the the tape where it's coming out of out of Sasquatch there. And, of course, I had to get myself there pointing towards Get the hero me. shot, right? That's right. So we come back down, and we got done, and we're all jaw-jacking, and we got done, and Dud says, hey, we got to take a picture. So that's uh, that was that shot. But I found the next day online, he was up the mountain taking a photo at Sasquatch looking back down the hill. Now, everybody who's on the live stream, if you look at the biggest tree, the big round tree at the bottom of the hill on the left, there's a line of people standing there in front of that tree. That's where we shot from. So that gives you an indication of just how far. That's with Sasquatch looking back at us. That's what he yeah. sees. Yep. And we're pretty little down at, at there. Well, and you can see those the two guys behind him there over his shoulder, how small they look. And they're just, just a little bit behind him, but it's the difference in the, the uh, elevation. Right. And if you go back to the picture of... of us with Dudley. If you look over up his, up over the shoulder, you can see Sasquatch up there, and look how little he looks at when we're looking up at him. Yep, right above that little pine tree, right there. Exactly, in the and so it was just one of those things. It was awesome. It was fun. It was. It, it's a good way for people to end their shoot when you can shoot with the guy who sets the course uh, and who is known. 
around the world as a uh, top notch archer. Top notch archer. And he was having. And, and what did you win, Mike? We'll get to that in just a second. Because here's the important thing the, the one thing that we said we'd get back to was Danny's shot and him with a sight housing. And you can see, I, this is a picture of him so, at full draw. And I took and I, I actually leveled the picture and blew it up as best I could. And you can see his arrow aiming right at the bottom of the sight housing. So what happened was we shot, so I set my, my tape up like I normally do. And we did shoot an 80 yarder out on the course. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, no big deal. Well, this one was 106. So I just dialed to where I needed to be. And, and I kind of guessed because mine only went to 100, so I dropped it a little bit lower. Exactly what Mike did. And as you can see in this photo that, you know, eventually, I didn't I didn't even pay attention to it because I was confident that I was going to let it rip. And I did. And I literally took the bubble off my housing. And my, my fletching went somewhere, and uh, my arrow went about halfway up the, 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 the hill and into the trees. So Now, Danny's sight's not the same as mine, but it's the same style. So as you can see, these, these are what we call adjustable sights for distance and you can see that i can actually rotate it up for the short shot there's 20 yards and then all the way down here as it goes down i use my top pin and that's 100 yards but mike it's 106 yeah so i had to fudge it <laughs> and he, so i guess i remember this conversation and i guess Does look about right yeah sure. I, I said yeah that's about right there and and that's what i shot so you see the sight moving down and danny's the way his sight is set up and we never thought about I never thought about it. It could have happened to me, too. Yeah. I, I don't know how much clearance I had. Right. And because what's going to happen right. What's going to happen on your rest is this is going to lift up. Yep. Matter of fact, it would probably, probably be interesting to see how much clearance you do have. Yeah. But it was just one of those things. I shot out to 80 yards on the hill, so I was not even... I wasn't even thinking about it. And with the vapor trail rest, you shoot with the cock vein up. So... His vein is what hit. Otherwise, yeah. you would have known on the draw if, if the actual arrow would have hit the Oh, yeah, for so. sure. For sure. So, word of the wise, <laughs> I did it. When you're going out and you, you know, I shot my sight, I set my sight tape up for 20 and 50 and put my tape on. I was good out to 80, but 106, yeah, it's not a good thing. So, yeah. what I got to do is I got to go reset my sight. I got to move it up so I can make it go lower to make my yardage there you go shoot longer distance right exactly but now i don't think we'll be doing anything that long this year so i'm probably good i gotta go just test my sight uh which i did the next day mike says hey you go shoot that thing make sure you're on and i was which was which is awesome i didn't destroy anything of that or else i would have been out of luck so you know we shot we had fun we had laughed and then what did mike win you asked tammy this is the hat that we've been pointing at since we got back and we talk about it's a Sitka hat, and it says winner, 106-yard Bigfoot 2022 John Dudley. He signed it. All right. So that was awesome. That was that was that was the end to day one. So this this will be worn. It's going to sit up here with the rest of the stuff. Right. Exactly. And we're going to add it to our wall of wall of fame. That's right. So so, but it was just a I can great... say I I outshot John Dudley. You did actually. <laughs> Two guys shot. Yeah. Me and, shot him, and yeah. it was fun. It was, and that's what it's all about. It's all about having fun, meeting people, uh, meeting people exactly what we did. It yeah. was uh, the five guys that were ahead of us. Um, we're going to meet them the next day. But we ended up coming off the hill. We got rid of our stuff. We walked around a little bit, talked to a few people. Um, and we had, uh, and that was basically our end of our, end of our day one was Friday night. And so we, you know, we were kind of hungry and. Got something to eat. Yeah. I tell you what, though. Um, let's take a quick break, and we come back. We'll pick it up from going out to dinner. We're going to step outside, take our next break. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Third segment of the show, we had a question in the break. Uh, Mr. Genza wants to show the release that we use. Danny and I shoot the exact same release, same color, same everything. And I don't know if you can see it or not there, but that is the release. It's a thumb release. 
basically it's got a hook right here for those of you who may not be familiar and you put that around the string you click or actually take that back when it's open you push that down and you put this around the string and it clicks and it locks so it's on the, the string with your fist forward like so <coughs> so when you pull back you pull straight back and hit your anchor point now the thing you must be very very careful as you can see where my thumb is it's not on the spring i got a spring on this instead of using the barrel and that just puts tension on it until it fires so once i get anchored i bring my thumb up and i start applying pressure as i get ready to to shoot and then when it clicks it goes off you got a picture of it there dan i'm working on it he's going to pull it up here on his laptop and we'll be able to show you a closer picture of it but this this right here has changed the way i shoot and hunt uh it, it's it's made it's a huge huge game changer for me and for Danny both. It has uh, greatly improved our accuracy. Uh, it's about as big as I can get it. All right. Well, there it is, right there. It stands. Uh, this is the SX3. Correct. That's the SX3. Uh, as, as the one you see in the picture uh, has the solid thumb bar. We've got this tension spring. Uh, it, it helps in target panic. It helps just. It, it's a lot easier. Uh, what's also nice about this is that you can actually take the pin out that's in the handle and screw it in, and mm -hmm. it won't fire. Yeah, you, so you can practice yep. and not worry about it firing. When you when, what he's talking about, um, I have mine here in the studio somewhere. <laughs> right, it's packed. I know it's still here, but I just haven't got it, gotten it out, and I don't know exactly where it's at. But basically, what he's talking about is right here in the side. You can run. You, you lock it onto your bow, and you can run this thumb through, thumb screw through. And it locks it into the lock position. And when you fire it, this hook will not release a string. Mm -hmm. So you can actually pull back, practice your form, and practice firing, and the string will not. Exactly. And that's the biggest it's, thing. It keeps is, it from dry firing. And I tell you what, it, with Dan's help and learning how to shoot these releases, uh, these releases, uh, you've got the stands out there. Dudley's got his out there. Uh, Ultraview's got theirs out there. It's just getting used to the release that you're using, and they're, you know, with practice, it changes your game. It literally, literally changes your game. Absolutely. I will say, before you use one, you know, take the time and really study how this is, because if you pull this back with your thumb on there, <laughs> you're going to see stars, because the first thing you do when you pull back is you're going to pop off the string, and your hand's going to come back and hit you right in the nose. So, and everybody does it. I've done it once. I've done it. I've done it at Jim's shop. I've done it. it it's You just get into a, you literally got to start thinking of how you're going to pull it back, get into that before you get on that release. Because you, you make that release so finite that you barely have to touch it and it's going to go off. You don't want to have to a, a lot of thumb travel or nothing like that. It, it literally, and that spring makes a world of difference versus a barrel. When when you uh, you put your thumb on there, well, here, it takes this this much pressure to shoot it right so as you start your draw your start your shot it forces you to concentrate on holding the bow steady and not so much on this because you don't know exactly when it's going to go off because it's a spring yep exactly so that's one of the things that uh, dan has, has taught us through the years of how to shoot these things and and be prepared and learning learning your instrument that you're using to shoot with so great great release absolutely highly recommend it they are pricey i will warn you they're all pricey out there. If you're going to get into a thumb release, uh, they're all in that upper. Uh, there's some that are cheaper. Um, so beginners, definitely try them out. My brother shoots one. I think he got it Bass Pro over 10 years ago, now that I think about it. But he loves it. You know, he just, that's. What he uses. I, he switched over, and he hasn't gone back since. And he shot well. He mm -hmm. had some of the targets. He outshot us. And, you know, he only hit up to 60 yards. And, you know. Obviously, like like in the real setting, he probably wouldn't do that. But we were out there to have fun, and he was hitting foam at sixty. Yeah, he was, was hitting fun. some good shots at sixty. Absolutely, and that that's the way it goes. And Adam, when when you're ready, you let us know, and we will help you out. Let's get that. Let's make that head. Let's make that happen, Adam, sooner, so we can get you ready and maybe get you out there for October first. Absolutely. So, all right. So Danny mentioned we got done shot with Dudley. The guys that we shot against were jaw jacking giving us the business and as we sit there and talked it's like well what are you guys gonna do gonna get get something to eat yeah well where are you guys going well we're gonna go down to the 231 bar and grill down there on the highway and they're like what because they went to somewhere else yeah they're like well how good's food it's good it's just reasonable so they said well we'll go down and save a table okay so they took off well we took off quicker than they did we got down there and saved a the table and then they come we sit there and had dinner together and talked 
and had a good time. Talked archery, talked all kinds of stuff. You know, <laughs> just life. It, it, was, it was cool. It, it was it was cool. You know, they are from uh, the the Petoskey area. I mm-hmm. think um, they were close to that area. Some lived down here. Uh, found out that the, the one brother lives in Rochester, works at General Motors, matter of fact, and um, the other one, they all live north up there, and it's just something, they do a lot of hunting. Yeah. They, they love their hunting, whatever it might be. Got to hear about a story, how he left it, left his bow. <laughs> he, he, he has a pickup truck, so he was out shooting. He likes to shoot every day, and he put his bow in the back of his pickup truck with the case, and he drove off. With the tailgate down. With the tailgate down. And then when he got to wherever he was going, he looked in the back and said, oh, my tailgate's down. And no bow. And no bow. <laughs> and by the time he could drive back, there was no bow. There was no bow. So word to the wise when making sure you have your, put your tailgate up. There you go. So, so we got to meet them, and in, in, in sure enough, you know, you, you strike up a friendship and, and talk about it, have dinner. Uh, there was a bunch of other people there, obviously, from Tech, because the, the waitress even asked us, you know, are you from that, or what are you guys doing, and how many days is it going, and we're like, well, it's going to go till Sunday, and mm-hmm. she's like, oh, okay. So anyway, we got done with dinner. Next day, got back up on the mountain, started to head up, and lo and behold, as we get to the top of the mountain, back up, up the same chairlift, First day we went to the left. This day we went to the a little forward and to the right. And as we're standing there, I hear, hey. <laughs> we look up. It's the same four guys. And they're right ahead of us again. And the guy that shot and, and beat Dudley and was right next to mine, he says, you took pictures yesterday, right? I said, yeah. He goes, can you send me the picture of the arrows? I want to, you know, I'd like to have those, have them. And I'm like, yeah. So shot them to him, you know, airdropped them to him, whatever. And then they said, you want, why don't you guys shoot with us today? We're like, heck yeah. Yeah. It so was, it was, it, as you can see, uh, and Mike's going to throw up the picture as we were heading up to the, heading over, we got our stuff ready and you could tell it was going to be another beautiful day out there. It was sunny and, and everything. And um, we, it, it was just another beautiful day. And we started, we met him at the top of the hill. They said, hey, let's shoot with the, each other. And it was, it, it was over before we knew it. The, the, we shot the prime course that day, which was a lot flatter, a lot easier walking, S- still long shots. Actually, I think the shots were a little longer. But as the shoot went on, I only took one picture during that whole that whole shooting. And that was me and the guy that I beat and a friend of his. That was the top grouping of the day. We all punched right there in, in the center. And there was some shots again here and there. This one again between trees between Mm -hmm. uh, uphill downhill actually there was a couple in the power lines because the power lines are cut right through the hill we were in the opening of the power lines just i think the one was 90 the 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 one that was furthest was 90 90 yard yard shot and you're just launching these arrows and and it says it was a little sign that says uh shoot and pull and come back so we shoot all right somebody's gotta go get them then they come back then we went the other way kind of did the same thing there was a couple shots along this power line that you were literally looking into the dark zone yeah you couldn't see a target you you, without binoculars without binoculars you were like uh okay and then when you went to your site it was like oh my so that was the only picture we took and then we got to the end it's like we took a group photo so these are the guys we shot with. Yeah, great guys. Uh, we're we're going to see if we can get them on the show toward, more towards fall because they do a lot of other things, too. They they basically hunt everything uh, from geese. They do fishing. They do deer. Uh, so we're going to try to get them on the show, find out how it's going up there. Now, the in, guy standing next to Danny in the photo is the guy who... Sam. Sam, that's right. Sam, he was the one that shot against me and Dudley, you know, yep. was right there in the middle. And he, afterwards, he went and did one of the, the shots where you, you pay a little money to try to win a truck. So you pay $15 an arrow. You're shooting at 112 yards. And if you get it inside, inside, not touching the line. Of the 10 ring. The 10 ring. You get one ticket entered in to, I think this year it was a Chevy Silverado. And he got, he said, okay, I got to try this. And he spent a little bit of money, but he did it. And and truthfully, at the end of the at the end of this, there is not many that get put into this. At this point, how many? This was event six or seven. Yeah, and there was forty tickets. Yeah, there wasn't many, and usually they end up with about uh, up to about sixty, seventy. So your chances are actually pretty good if you get put into this thing for a truck. And he, lo and behold, he smacked it uh, after a little bit. So we all high fived and. 
you know, and away we went. And so we uh, got rid of our stuff and we headed. It was about get about four thirty, and lo and behold, there was some free stuff over by the Dudley. And he obviously had to say some words. Uh, they gave out some free beer, and uh, he gave a little speech, and it was awesome. It was just he was just talking about, and then he took some question and answers. So you know, stuff they give out was some really nice prizes. So two three hundred dollar gifts. Yeah, he was giving away some really good prizes, binoculars, uh, some other stuff. Obviously, from like little swag hats. To some top notch stuff of, of, I bet they give away a couple grand worth of stuff. Oh, easily throughout the weekend for sure. Yeah, maybe and, even a little more. Right, and there was some other uh, there besides the caribou. Uh, you could shoot at the African uh, animal that was closer, and you were entered into uh, a drawing for an African hunt. And then there was the steel. Is that a rhino? The steel. The steel yeah, target. Yeah. And literally, you only had a couple inch diameter. Either you you hit foam, or you're going to smash your arrow. Yep. And it was kind of fun because every once in a while you'd hear that clang, clang, and you <laughs> and arrow was destroyed. And then if you did that, you were entered in for another another set of gifts. Uh, I forget what it was. I think there was a, a cooler full of something. But uh, yeah, and they make it fun. They make it you know whether you're on the practice range. There was a guy on the practice range on Saturday morning, literally was shooting because he had just bought the bow from the stand. And brought it over because he didn't like his bow that he shot yesterday. So he bought a new bow, brought it over Saturday morning, was tuning it in. What I like, you know, going back to Dudley being there at the end of his course and watching people shoot with him, and and there would be there was crowds. I mean, it wasn't like it was those four guys and Danny and me standing there shooting. I mean, there was a gallery behind us. You want to talk about pressure? Oh, you know. Well, that's where you, at the end of the at the end of the shoot, you you kind of. You watch people shoot, and you, you just sit around and just yeah. like watch the next group shoot to see yeah. how they did. So well, that's what we did. That's what, exactly, and, and he's you, cheering everybody on, encouraging people. But there was, uh, and we saw the vi- I saw the videos on these on his page that earlier in the day before we shot, I think there was a girl that come up, uh, not a girl, a woman that come up. She had just gotten her bow first day. First thing they do is take her to tack. First time she ever shot a bow in her life, and she's up there at the line. And I believe she had eighty yard an eighty yard pin was her tallest pin. So Dudley, you know, he's reading the wind. He's like, "All right, aim aim up there at that top tree, right above Sasquatch, but aim above him at that tree, at the top of that tree." She rears back, boom, hits foam. Yep. And then there's a kid to come up here, fourteen year old kid. This is great. He had a forty yard pin. That was his longest pin, longest shot he had on his sight. And Dudley uh, tells him what to, you know, kind of where to aim at. The wind's blowing. And he says, you sure you can do this? And the kid's like, I got this. Rips back, wham, hits foam on a, with a 40-yard pin. I mean, it's just, he, that's the kind of guy he is. He is a great ambassador for the sport uh, of archery. He he encourages people. He's not a show-off. He's no, very humble. Very, very, very humble. Willing to help, willing to encourage, yeah. willing to promote. Like like there, he, he, he basically is a great advertisement. Uh, for for archery uh, and PSC, and luckily PSC has them. There's a backstory as to why they have them. Uh, it just it was it fit what he wanted to do in his life at this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he's all he'll always tell you. I could have went to other companies for more money, but I didn't get what I have the freedom that I do with PSC. And he, he sat down with Pete mm-hmm. Shepley and went over what he wanted. And Pete's like, okay, yeah, here you go. Gives, so, he he wants to do something. They give him an engineer. They draw it up, mock it up. He gets to play with it, make improvements on it, and before you know it, it winds up in our hands. You know, as, as consumers, being able to shoot a great piece of equipment that he has kind of tinkered with and gotten the most out of. So. And he and he tries to to feel to fill all those voids, right? The 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 price points of uh, an average hunter to an elite hunter, mm-hmm. from like the carbon bows that he has down to the the non carbon aluminum bows that are in the, the in the hundred dollars, a couple hundred dollar range, seven hundred, I think, is what it is. Uh, but he offers that up and says, "Hey, you get into it, you spend a little bit of money, mm-hmm. and you're going to be there." And it, he he puts his name on it, so it, it's one of those things. It's awesome, and you you talk with him, and he's very very humble. It's awesome. He's a great and like I said, great ambassador for the sport of archery, and he wants to see everybody succeed. Whether you're a child, a uh, woman, you're a male, any 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 age group, any age group, any where you're at in archery, if you're just beginning or you're a full fledged tournament shooter, you know, he'll always encourage. You. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's take our last break. We come back. We'll kind of wrap things up. Let's do that. We're gonna step outside with you. We'll be right back after this. 
Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a vapor shooter? Find out at pscarchery.com. Last segment of the show. Uh, you know, we, Mr. Ginzel was asking us what we shot, and he put in the chat there what he was shooting. So uh, we said, well, let's pull up here and take a quick peeky at it. And he is shooting. What model is that again, that Danny? That is a mm, True Ball Max Pro 4. Okay. Thumb release. Yep, very similar to what we're using. And the only difference being his has the double uh, jaw. Double jaw, mm -hmm. and ours is a single yep. jaw that flips. Mm -hmm. But you know what? If it's improved your game, then you're all about it. Just work um, with it. And that's that's almost like the type my brother shoots too. I think his is a true ball as well. Yep. Instead of the hinge jaw, yeah, it's got the double the pincher jaws on it. So yep. same same basic concept is what we're shooting here. So it, uh, yeah, I can't say enough for it for that style of, of release. It's just. It really has enhanced my oh, game. You it's, know, it's you're no longer doing like you're no longer doing this re this reach and pull with your index finger because it, it causes causes you to, to come off of your your anchor point. You know, it, when you start reaching for something, and it's there's too much movement there for me. Exactly. Well, that's what we learned, right? That's yep. what Dan taught us. Look at the movement you got doing this as opposed to a little bit of this, a little squeeze. Yeah. Or the the one thing that that he taught us too. Another thing, and I and I've played with instead of of squeezing with your thumb, just rock and let the pressure off with that pinky. Pull that pressure on that pinky and rock that, that release ever so slightly in, as you squeeze. And it fires. And you set them that, you set them that light because you can adjust how much tension is on that to yes. shoot. Yes, yeah, yep, the tension is fully adjustable on that. So. so let us know how you do with that, Tom. You know, Absolutely. Always good to hear, you know, what you're using. Something new for the year, let us know how it's going, what's, what's happening with you and, and how that release is treating you. So overall, experience-wise, overall, I think it was recommended by Jim. There, there you, go. you go. Explains it. Uh, experience-wise, I think per usual, we had a great time. I think my brother thoroughly enjoyed himself. Um, I think uh, it's definitely again next year. Uh, I've already had a cousin hit me up says he wants to do it. I said, well, we'll, get, we'll see what happens. And uh, obviously, we'll try to get Adam Wynn out there with us. That would be fun. And like I said, it's it's a couple of days of just being fun and cutting it up and having a good time. And, you know, whether you've got a group or you, there's even been some uh, single people that just go up there and they get put with groups. And I've seen great yep. messages about yep. that. Hey, yep. I met so-and-so. And they make friends. Yeah. And um, we met a couple years back. I didn't see him this year. He was but, there. Yeah, he was there. But yep. we didn't see him. So, you know, it, it's just an, an event that um, you got to try it. If you're in archery and you want to do something fun and you got a weekend to do it, Go do it, because it is a blast. Well, Tammy was asking how many arrows that you lost. He's got a quiver full right there. This was early on. I think he lost one, maybe maybe two before this. And I just I wanted to see if I could find like later on in the I think I was I think I I think overall it was five arrows I went, over I lost over the two. Okay, days. so there and now you can see there there's a few less sticking in the quiver. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and it was it was like yeah, it was it was all right though. It was known gonna happen. Let's just get it over with. But, uh, you know, it's just it's so much fun getting out there, shooting, and just the weather was phenomenal. Um, even in rain, it was phenomenal. We Last yeah. year, just getting soaked, we were laughing about it. But, uh, Day yeah. Day one, I, lost, I didn't lose one. I, I smashed one into a tree. Yeah. And I got the whole thing back, and then when I did the flex, but I, I chose not to shoot it just because of the impact. Um, I haven't done the uh, Q-tip test on it to see if I have any fiber right. sticking out of it yet. The, especially at the that kind of impact right. on it. And then day two, day two, I did. I, I lost two and smashed one. Yeah, day two, I did better. You did a lot. Yeah, you, you did. You did great on day two. I didn't have a good day on day it two. Was, it was different between night and day. But then that's the difference of, of shooting and not shooting. So you start shooting, you start yeah. getting your rhythm. But uh, how did you feel about it? The overall course, I love both courses. Um, I'm glad there was only 20 targets day one because uh, that course, it got really tough in the middle. My legs were really, really hurting. Um, could I have shot five more targets? Yeah, but it, it would have been, it'd have been a, a struggle. 
it would have been yeah. it would have been that mental part of of if you're out west yeah and you're getting trying to you're in the late part of the day you've been walking yeah. up and down up and, and down, you get and, that shot of a lifetime and you get that shot of a lifetime it would have been exactly where it would have been and it would have been it would have been okay I liked I liked finishing shooting with Dudley. To me, that that was like no matter what I did on the course or no matter what I did on the shot, to have the opportunity to shoot side by side with him. To me, that was the whole event. Oh, absolutely! You that know, was you, that you was, and me there with him. That. It was just it was really it was really really cool to be right, able to, it was. to do that. And it was it was so cool. And uh, Tammy, Sam, with us that second day lost one arrow because what he did is he shot through some trees and literally there was a piece of bark hanging and it, it hit that it deflected off into the woods somewhere so he lost only one that day yeah so, he hit foam every time oh yeah the guy's yeah. a phenomenal shot he, he was and he and but like you said mike had it right you, you go you're up down up down you're getting tired you're at the last target and here you get to shoot with john Dunn. yeah I, I tell you what you really you really can't Ask for more than as that. Far, as far as archery is concerned, yeah. you know, it's one of those things that you just really can't put into words when you're shooting with one of the best out there. Yep, yep, it was really cool. Now, the second day, the part I really liked was the fact we didn't take a lot of pictures uh, because we were talking amongst the group, and it seemed like every time we went for, to another target, I was walking up with one of the other guys, you know, right, and talking, and you know, and they were doing the same thing. Is like we're kind of rotating through, and everybody got a chance to talk to everybody. You got a chance to know them. And we're, when we shot the last target, I went, "Wait, what? This is it? We're done?" Because it, it felt like it was only like a half hour. It it, it really flowed. It was easy walking. Um, it, it was it was, it was a, a good course. And the last one was one of the toughest. Literally shooting up into a black hole, up up angle into a literally a black hole. Until you put your binoculars on it, then you could barely make it out, and yeah, just shoot that way. And um, it was the mini moose. It was the mini moose, and like Mike said, it went so fast. We we're like, we're done. It, it happened that quick. It did, and we we flew, and it was it was a great time. Like I said, you get a chance to go do a tack event wherever you might be. If there's one close by, go do it. I mean, yeah, yeah it. They're always trying to work on. Uh, when they have uh, registration, it would have been great. Obviously, they learned this year that they crashed their server. Uh, <laughs> they'll work through that, and they did a fantastic job. Uh, for us, I got everybody uh, registered, but it ended up because I had to go back and forth. By the time I, it, only three people. By the time I, my brother was way off. So in times, so like two hours, and so like I emailed him right away. I said, "Look, we're together. Can you bring him closer so we can go?" And they did. They got him to within a half hour, and they said, "Don't worry about it. He can go up on the lift with you guys, and then just shoot." Yep, and they did. They let us all go up together, so it worked out great. Right, and then we got that was the second day, and we got to shoot with those guys. Yep, again, so that exactly. Was cool. So it was it was really cool. It was a good time had by all. Definitely do it again next year. Um, from what we hear, we'll be back at uh, Boeing or Crystal Mountain. Just no matter what the date will be. Are we going to stay at the same place? If it's going to be at Crystal Mountain, I would definitely say that, yeah. Okay, so now that we've talked about tack and everything, where we stayed, like I said, was a quarter mile down the road, down the dirt road from the Ironfish Distillery. And I tell you what, what is really neat about this area as you're driving down these roads is you start running into these fields. These fields are full of oats, they're full of rye, there's full, but there's a sign in each field mm -hmm. that says this this field of rye will turn into 75 barrels of whiskey of whiskey in the future in the future for iron fish and that was kind of a neat thing and of course that's prime deer habitat. well so that first night after we sipped on a few barley pops i grabbed another one i said let's go for a walk i had my binoculars with me i said there's deer in these fields guys there's got to be i said this is prime habitat it's up in the northwest 12 where the apr restrictions are we saw deer tracks in the the two track leading down to the house we walked up and down two separate fields in wood lines and never saw deer. I know, right? Right it, at dusk. It was right like, at dusk. It was prime time, and we didn't see a thing. Now, could they have been standing there looking at us? Probably, because these fields were rolling. You know, they could have been on the downside. But well, even walked, it was it was probably chest high. And if a deer was standing up looking at you, you could have caught the ears. Yeah, but, but if they were laying there munching, you oh, not see them. They weren't. Gonna, but there was deer tracks all on the road, right? But and I so, cannot believe we did not see one deer. Exactly so. in those fields, we did see deer traveling the roads. Yep, we saw that, and. Uh, it was yeah we're we'll probably stay at the same spot it was it was an, it's a beautiful place absolutely and depending on how many we get there's two places there we can get one or two depending on if we can get enough people yep and so, have a good old time no it was it was a great time i highly suggest for any of you archers out there that are contemplating going to tech just do it 
just flat out just just plan it and do it and, and take two shoot two days. Um, I wouldn't suggest if you've never been before. I wouldn't suggest trying to shoot two courses in a day. It's uh, depending on where you're at. It can be really taxing. Literally, we met a guy in the parking lot. He was having his lunch. He was in his sixties. Uh, we were we were we were done. We were leaving and talked to him a little bit. And he was having lunch and he was waiting for his group with his son in it. They went back up. He shot, and shot the second. He's like, "Now nah, I'm done with that. I, I did the one course. I had enough, you know." And and he wasn't going back up. But to shoot two courses in one day, um, it, it's tough. Mm-hmm. It, it, literally, you definitely got to get an early knock time because then you can come down, you can have a lunch, you can recharge a little bit, and then go back up and shoot it. Because each course, three probably hours. three hours yeah. on average, two and a half, three hours. Yep. You know, the first day, I think we walked seven miles. Second day, we walked, I think, four and a half. Yeah, it was a little bit shorter, but it went so fast because we were having so much fun. And that's the part of this. These guys, we never met. And we met them for two days, and we had a blast. And you're right, Adam, when it is fun. It is a blast. And literally, you're. it is so much fun and laughter when you're walking up to a target. And as you're walking up, like Mike showed in the pictures, you got arrows and trees. You got smashed arrows around. And some of these... Uh, the target was right there, but if you missed, you were hitting a tree, or you were you were going to mm-hmm. be putting it into the side of the hill, or mm-hmm. you were going to be doing something. And there was carnage in some of these, and you're like, "Yep, this was a good one." And the ones, you know, it, you just you go have fun, and the, the buckets of arrows that are there that are lost and found, you know, it, it's almost like, "Hey, I found one. Oh, this isn't mm-hmm. mine." Yeah. So, well, the thing that that caught my eye, I and mean, you and I talked about this before the show, is. The first three, this is our fourth tech, yep. I think. The first three years we went, um, you, and we've talked about this before, you see guys and gals decked out head to toe, camo, uh, you know, it's it's like they're going in the woods Rambo style. I mean, they, it, it they is, look like they're ready to go hunting. Like every animal out there is yeah. alive and, and, and well and ready to go down. So, so, this year, so, so this year, and Tammy, you'll be glad to know, that the colors of the wares were tan, brown, and gray. That was the the choices, the pretty much across the scheme. Yep. You know, you see an occasional piece of camo here or there, or a camo shirt, or or, or, or t shirts yeah. or whatever. But it seemed to be it, it was, was toned way down. Oh yeah, it was. That, I think it, it really depends on who, what caliber of people are there because you get sometimes, and we're not knocking them. It's yeah. just It's just that's what they want to do. You go right ahead. You know, maybe you are preparing yourself for that out west hunt. That's yeah. the great thing to do it. You know, but we're there to have some fun, shoot some shoot some arrows. Lose some arrows. Yeah. And uh, the other cool thing that got me was at the end of day one, uh, there was there was golfing events going on, weddings going on. So there's people at this resort. That's where it's at. It's at a ski resort that were not part of the archery world. And when I got done, when we got all done shooting with, with uh, there at Sasquatch, you know, I got my hat and everything and got pictures and all that. We're all done. And this gentleman walked up to me who had golf shorts and a golf shirt on. I, you know, I don't know if he was part of a wedding party, you know, there to see somebody get married or if he was golfing, you know, golf, golfing or whatever. There was, he was standing there with two other guys, and I'm kind of getting my stuff picked up. And he goes, can I ask you a question? I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, he says, you know, he's a great shooting. He said, by the way, I'm like, thanks. And he said, what what kind of sight do you have to shoot like that? He had no clue. He says, you know, I don't know anything about this archery stuff, but he was intrigued enough to come up and ask a question about it, you know, because he, he was he was interested well, enough to know about it. That's a great thing you, you brought up. What better way to show off the sport is when you are when you have availability of people to walk up and just watch Yeah, guys and gals winging it at 106 yards yeah. at a Sasquatch. Yeah. And then if, you, if some are hitting it, some are missing it, and then this guy was intrigued enough to ask you about yeah. it. How do you do it? Yeah, how, do you, how did you do that? How, how does that site work, you know? And so I just took 10, 5, 10 minutes, kind of talked through how it all worked and what we do and about the event, you know. And so not only are we out there to have fun, but we got to remember we can also be ambassadors for the sport. Absolutely. And, and that kudos, goes for everybody. It, it, anybody in the sport can be ambassador to the sport, talk about it. And kudos to the guys that we saw with longbows. That Absolutely, they're yeah. going out there. I'm not sure how they were doing it, yeah. but longbows and some recurves, right? And it was it was fun to see those guys out there too, and just see. And, and then I did see that gentleman just walking around, floating around the, the the venues of the vendors and everything. So yeah, you know, give him credit for wanting to just check it out and ask see what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. Talk to people, so. right? You don't know, you got to ask. There's there's no dumb question. There's never there a dumb is, question. There is never a dumb question. So, like I, we tell everybody, just ask. 
we'll answer. If we don't know, we'll try to get the answer from somebody who will know. Yep. You know, and we've had that happen when we've done sh events out at Cabela's uh, and other places, you know, but it's just good to see people out there and getting out there and being in the outdoors and archery. Well, I'll tell you what, I think we need to wrap it up. We've went a little long tonight, which that's okay, but we had a blast. Tack was good. Can't wait till next year. Would love to see all of y'all out there. You know, if, if, you, if you know us, you see us there, come up and say hi. Yeah, and, and unfortunately Kyle wasn't able to be there because he was in a fishing tournament, and, you know, it was like, ah, oh, but we'll yep. see if we can't make it happen again next year. So we did see a few friends there, so that was cool. Absolutely. So next week. What next we week, so I'm going to be in the UP. Oh, that's right. Next week is vacation week. Uh, I'll be in the UP. We're going to try to hook up with Adam Wynn and talk a little bit of fishing because he's doing some kayak fishing. Maybe run through his setup a little bit. Yep. So, Adam, if you're on listening right now, uh, start taking photos. <laughs> right. <laughs> Send them to me. So, But uh, that'll do it for us this week. We're going to try to get you a show next week. It's 4th of July. Most importantly, be safe out there. Don't be lighting firecrackers off and blowing your trigger fingers off. And, and be careful if it's dry out there. With Absolutely. What you're doing. Uh, no forest fires. Yeah, no forest fires, and, and be safe. So that's that's all we got for this week. Uh, remember, go over if you're listening on the podcast, go over to iTunes, give us a review over there. That helps us and helps people who help us. And make sure that you share the show for us as well, and give us a like, follow here on social media. Y'all take care and be safe out there. We will see you hopefully again next week. But if not, it'll be two weeks. So you just have to stay tuned and we'll throw something at you. Y'all take care. This episode was brought to you by PSC Archery, Deer Camp Coffee, Buck Bates, JPO Game Call, The Island Armory, Hacker Max, Sunrise Archery, and C3 Better the Hunt Technology. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.